Hi, this video is going to cover SAT problems that have to do with rules of exponents. So we're going to go over all the rules of exponents first, uh, take a look at um, what the rules are and why they work, and then I've got six problems picked out from the official SAT problems that we're going to do that apply the rules of exponents. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at rules of exponents. So our first rule of exponent is when we multiply um, two variables that have exponents, we're gonna add the exponents. So something like this, x to the third plus x to the fourth, or times x to the fourth rather equals x to the seventh. And let's see why that works, let's break it down. So if we have x to the third, that's multiplying x three times. Uh, x to the fourth is multiplying x four times. So we're just adding the number of times that we're multiplying together. So if we get um, third and fourth, then it's going to be the seventh. We're multiplying seven times. Okay, and then the next one is dividing. Um, so rather than adding, we're going to subtract here. So if we've got something like x to the fifth divided by x to the third, we're going to get x to the second. Five minus three is two. And for a visual for that, if you've got five um, x's being divided by three x's, we're subtracting because that's the number of x's that are going to cancel out. So if we look at that uh, fraction there, three of those are going to cancel out and we're going to be left with two. So that's why we're going to subtract to get the answer there. When we raise to a power on the next rule, um, we are going to end up multiplying. So x squared to the fourth is going to be two times four or x to the eighth. And visually what that we're doing there is we've got x squared and the number of times that we're multiplying it together is 4. So we've got to do 2 times 4 to get the total number of times we're multiplying 8 together. Okay, and in the next property, uh, we have two things inside of parentheses raised to a power. And all this is saying is when we have two things inside the parentheses, we've got to raise both to that power. So if we've got something like x, y to the fourth, both the x and the y have to be taken to the fourth power. But where some people make mistakes is when you've got two x all to the third power, the two needs to be raised to the third power, as well as the x being raised to the third power. So this is going to simplify to eight x to the third. The next rule just tells us that anything to the zero power is one. So even if we've got something complicated like this, raised to the zero power, we still get one. So rather than just memorizing that anything to the zero power equals one, let's see why that would make sense. So here I've got powers of two. So if you go up from the power two to the one to two to the two second, we have to multiply by two. So each time we go up here, we've got to multiply by two. So going down from two to the fourth, down to two to the third, we're going to divide by 2. Same thing for the next one. Divide by 2 and get 4. Divide by 2 to get 2. So to go from 2 to the first to 2 to the second, we have to divide by 2, which gets us 1. So that's just a demonstration of how something to the 0 power um, needs to equal 1. The next rule addresses negative exponents. So if something's to a negative exponent, it's the same as 1 over that same thing to a positive exponent. So if you've got x to the negative 7th, that's the same as 1 over x to the positive 7th. 1 over x to the negative 5th is the same as x to the positive 5th. Where this really comes in handy in simplifying expressions is that we can use this to get rid of negative exponents. So x to the negative 5th, we can move from the numerator to the denominator and have it become positive 5. Same thing with the z. We can move the z from the denominator to the numerator, and it becomes, instead of negative 4, it becomes positive 4. So we can use this to, as a first step to get rid of all negative exponents and then work from there. And the last rule addresses what do we have, um, what do we do when we have x brought up to a fraction? So the numerator is going to be the power, and the denominator is going to be the root. So if we have something like x to the 1 half, it's the square root of x. x to the 1 third is the cube root of x. So the denominator 
becomes the root. But once we get a numerator instead of one, there's two different things that we can do. We can put the numerator inside as the power, so the fifth root of x to the fourth, or we can take the whole thing, the fifth root of x, and raise the whole thing to the fourth. And it's important to know both of these different ways because if we're evaluating and simplifying, sometimes it's easier to um, do the fourth inside, and sometimes it's easier to do it outside. Okay, let's take a look at six practice SAT problems. All right, in the first problem, which of the following is equal to a to the two-thirds? Uh, this is just a application of the fractional exponent rule. So the denominator is going to be the root. It's going to be either one of these for the q root. And then the numerator ends up being the power, either inside or outside. So it's going to be choice D. Okay, in the second problem, a to the negative one half equals x. And we're trying to find out what is a in terms of x. That basically means we're just trying to solve for a. So one thing we could do is we could rewrite this as a radical. So to the one half fractional exponent to the one half is going to be the square root of the variable. So we're going to get the square root of a. But because it's negative, it's going to be 1 over the square root of a. So this a to the negative 1 half just becomes 1 over the square root of a. And that's equal to x. Now we've got to solve for a. So we're just going to do some mathematical um, manipulation to this. Multiply both sides by the square root of a. And you get 1 equals x times the square root of a. Divide both sides by x. And you get 1 over x equals the square root of a. And now to get rid of a radical, the square root of a we can get rid of by squaring it. So if we square both sides, we'll get a. And on this side, we want to square the 1. 1 squared is 1. And then square the x in the denominator and get x squared. So our answer is going to be 1 over x squared, which is c. I want to show you one other way to do this too. You could have done it this way. So to get rid of this, to make this a, if we raise it to a power, we're trying to get a to the 1. So if we multiply negative 1 half times negative 2, we're going to get 1. So if we raise both sides to negative 2, we keep it equal a to the negative one half to the negative two we multiply when we're raising to the power and we just get a to the one equals x to the negative two x to the negative two is the same as one over x to the positive two and we get our same answer c so just two different ways to do it okay in the third problem we've got um, x to the a squared over x to the b squared equals x to the 16. So first let's simplify this. So we're dividing, so we're going to subtract the exponents. So this becomes x to the a squared minus b squared. Right? I subtracted exponents, a squared minus b squared. And that equals x to the 16th. So if we have two things equal to each other, then their exponents have to equal each other. So this becomes a squared minus b squared equals 16. Now, they've given us a plus b, and they want us to find a minus b. So that should lead us to thinking that we've got to factor this difference of squares. So a squared minus b squared becomes a plus b times a minus b equals 16. And then if a plus b is 2, then a minus b has to be 8 in order to get 16. So our answer here for a minus b is going to be 8.
Okay, when we look at this one, it's a little confusing as to why they would give us 3x minus y equals 12. And we're trying to find the value of uh, 8 to the x over 2 to the y. The key here is to do any operations, any of these rules of exponents, we have to have the same base. So we can make this a base of 2, changing 8 into 2 to the 3rd. So we get 2 to the 3rd to the x over 2 to the y. And we multiply when we raise power. So this is going to be 2 to the 3x over 2 to the y. When we're dividing, we subtract exponents. So this is going to simplify to 2 to the 3x minus y. And then it becomes obvious why they gave us 3x minus y. So 2 to the 3x minus y is going to be the same as 2 to the 12th because they told us that 3x minus y equals 12. And so our answer is going to be a 2 to the 12th. Okay, in this, we've got negative and positive exponents mixed in here, um, and we're trying to find an equivalent equation. The easiest way is to get rid of the exponent, the negative exponents by moving them either up or down. So um, the y to the 1 half is going to stay in the numerator, and the x to the 1 third, x to the 1 third is going to stay in the denominator because they are positive. But the negative exponents, the y to the negative 1, we can move that up and it becomes y to the positive 1. Same thing, the x to the minus 2, we can move that down and it becomes x to the positive 2. Then it's just a matter of converting each of these. The y to the 1 half is going to be the square root of y x squared and then x to the one third is the cube root of x and this is equivalent to choice d all right the last problem um, a to the b over 4 equals 16 for positive integers a and b uh, what is one possible value of b so how could we get 16 with power? So for 16, um, we could get 2 to the 4th. We could get 4 squared. Or we could get 16 to the first power. Which means b to the 4th, which is the power, uh, could be 4, 2, or 1. So if b over 4 equals 4, then we just have to multiply both well sides by 4 to get b. So possible values of b could be 16, 8, or 4. And it's only looking for one possible value. So we could put in 4, 8, or 16. There is, um, obviously you would stop because it, you'd pick one of these answers and put it in. But there is also another thing um, you could take um, a to the one half and get 16 so 16 squared to the one half or to the one fourth so uh, just for completeness of this problem b to the fourth could also um, equal one half or um, which is two over four or one over four uh, so we have two more answers what b could equal b could also equal one or two as well so just for completeness but we're only looking for one answer so once we go through this then we're all set we just use one of these answers thanks for watching and if you have an SAT coming up good luck I'm gonna continue to add SAT material so if you'd like to subscribe right up here you can get notification of when new material comes out and I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here thanks again for watching and please come back soon